the 2023 NCAA Division II Men's Lacrosse Championship at Bismarck Catholic High School in Orlando, Florida. Today's second round team features the Lenore Ryan Bears and the Rollins College Stars. <laughs> Rollins College Men's Cowboys are a good sportsmanship by student athletes, coaches, and fans. The request is cooperation for the student athletes and officials in a positive manner. So can be derogatory comments or other intimidating actions Directed at athletes, officials, team representatives, or other fans will not be tolerated. A ground for removal. We appreciate your cooperation, creating a safe and positive game environment. Respect. The the game. Rolling College
ladies and gentlemen, as we honor our great nation and the men and women serving our country at home and abroad, we ask that you please rise of able and remove your hats. And now, the playing of our national anthem. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Harry Nelson Field here on the campus of Bishop Moore High School in Orlando, Florida for the NCAA quarterfinals matchup between the Lenore Rhine Bears and your Rollins College Tars. Hi, everybody. I'm Clark Sprinkle, joined today once again by Roy Hansen. Roy, uncharted territory for the Tars here. First time they've made an NCAA tourney appearance, uh, but they are ready. They are indeed. Lots of firsts for the, for the Rollins Tars this year. First time regular season conference champs. First time tournament conference champs in the postseason. And first bid to the NCAA tournament as well. We've got an interesting matchup here between the Tars and the visiting Bears. The Bears have come in ranked fifth in the country with the last polls. And the Tars come in ranked second in the country. Lenore Ryan, 15 and three on the season. Uh, they they dropped to South, uh, South Atlantic Conference Championship game against Limestone uh, just earlier uh, in the in the uh, year. Lost to Tampa in the regular season, but they knocked off Tampa on Wednesday to make it here against the Tars today. Yeah, that was an absolutely fantastic game, spearheaded by Petsabeni in goal. And absolute great performance in the fourth quarter to really secure the win for the Bears. You know, just a great defensive stand there. They were two men down, uh, under three minutes remaining. They held them off and were able to come away with a victory. And like you said, a couple of key saves there by Pensabeni keeping them in the game. Not to be outdone, Shahe Kachadurian, goalie for the Tars, a named honorable mention All-American this week. Uh, first goalie to win Sunshine State Conference Player of the Year uh, for the Tars. Tars are uh, fired up with this. A lot of star power out there on both teams. Five, five players from each team uh, with All-American honors this week. Tars undefeated, as you mentioned, on Sunshine State Conference play and the tournament champs. They are ready to roll uh, and um, should be a absolutely fantastic game today. As Kachadurian heads to his cage, Pensabini to his. Tars will be to our right. And Lenore Ryan Bears will be to our left as we are not low amongst the action in the press gazebo. No, we are high amongst the action in the air-conditioned press box today. Yes, yeah, slightly different atmosphere out here today uh, being at Bishop Moore Catholic High School as the Tar Sands for Field is under construction. Yes, and I uh, want to say congratulations to a lot of TARS graduating today. Arts and Sciences held their graduation earlier. It looks like it's just about finishing up now. And, of course, most importantly, Happy Mother's Day, everybody. Especially to my mom and then to my wife. As we are underway, ball is out, comes out in favor of the TARS. Nice ground ball pickup there on the run by Tesler. Swings it in. TARS attacking from right to left here in this first quarter of action. That face-off X is going to be a really interesting battle uh, 
today. Lenore Ryan comes in at a 56% face-off percentage on the season, but they won just 7 of 23 against Tampa, where Rollins was over 50% against Tampa in the regular season. Tars 55% on the regular season, looking to be successful on that today. Tars get their hands free, looking for that inlet, not there. We'll bring it back up, top center, as White control, swings it over, left side. Shot clock's a little bit further away from the action, but they are uh, visible. We'll bring them to you as, uh, as we can. Tars coming around, right side, up past the GLE, looking for that shot. Hands free, shot taken, save made by Pensabini. Ball on the deck, ground ball battled for. And that's going to be controlled by the Bears. Yeah, great save there by Petsapeni. Not, not the best shot, but either way, put it on cage, made Petsapeni make a save. One of the things we're going to see here today is that the two defenses for Rollins and Lenore Ryan are very, have very different styles. Lenore Ryan loves to keep it in the box, keep it condensed. They play a man-to-man, -man, but it's almost like a zone, whereas the Rollins College Tars like to press out, cause turnovers. Ball coming in. Back left for the Bears. So they'll swing it up. Top left. Plenty of time for them to shoot. They'll look to drive. Nice slide there by the Tars. Pick that up. Short stick on short stick now. I'll work back behind. Bears clearing out, getting personnel they want on. Pick set, shot taken over top of the cage. Catch Durian was ready for that one, though. Yeah, that's number 19, Eccleston, the strong lefty Canadian coming over the top there. You're going to see a lot of that today. Little pick set from the Lenore Rhine defenseman. He's got an offensive midi on him, so not a whole lot of communication going on there. That's why Eccleston had his hands so free at the top of the key. Nice defense there by the Tars. As, again, Lenore Rhine looking to make a move. 20 seconds on the shot clock. They'll work it over. Side right. Almost got off a shot, but it's not there. 15 to shoot. Ball over. Top left. Again, looking to drive. Excellent D here from the Tars. Knocked the ball loose. On the deck. Picked up by the Tars. We're heading the other way. Cause turnover there for the Tars. Excellent work there from Charlie Metz. Yeah, Charlie Metz, an absolutely great player the Tars added this year as a freshman. Second team all-conference has really improved throughout the year. Nice move underneath. But the Tars will slow that one down. Roy, what's the key for the Tars here to set the tone in the early going in this game? Do you want to come out and just run, 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 or do you want to slow it down and play your game here? I would say the Tars feel like they have the, the advantage offensively. And Woo! there's a goal by Grant Hansen, sneaking it low to low on the 6'5 keeper, Petsabeni. But, yeah, I think, I think both teams are very defensive teams, um, as you can see though, with the 10-9 win from Lenore Ryan over Tampa, who's traditionally a very high-scoring team. Um, they're going to want to settle the ball 6v6. They, Tars want to win this battle with our offense versus their defense. We know that both teams have very strong keepers, very strong Ds. It's just going to be a test of who can put more uh, goals in the basket. Great shot there by Hansen. Uh, low to low five hole there on Pensabini. As you mentioned, that 6 5 keeper, um, 205 listed on the stat sheet. Tars Shahe Kachadurian, 6 3, listed at 280. On yeah. the stat sheet. Yep, and you saw Petsabeni and, and Grant Hansen get a little handshake there after Grant Hansen scored that goal. They actually played together uh, in high school. I actually know Petsabeni myself lives 15 minutes from where I'm from, so that's going to be a nice little friendly matchup today. Not too friendly. Not hopefully. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, hopefully yep, not yeah. too friendly. Not so friendly on our side, hopefully. Yeah. As the Tars look to drive down the alley, nicely defended by the Bears. A roll underneath. Double team is on right on top of the crease. Wow, what a save. Pinsa Benny comes out with a fist pump, and he saved an assured goal right there. I th I, that wasn't even off the stick. That might have been off his bottom hand. Yeah. Wow, what a save. Tars swinging up, top right, quickly moving the ball over top left. Now White gets his hand free. Shot from the top. That overhand rip finds the back of the net. Off stick on Pinsa Benny. Yeah, I think Lenore Ryan's defensive scheme has worked fantastic for them all year. Keep it tight, play man-to-man -man almost like in a zone, as I mentioned before, but against players like Justin White and Grant Hansen, who work fantastic in a three-by-three -three box where all they need is one step to let their shot go, it's going to be tough for this Lenore Ryan defense to hang with them. So often you see players up at the, uh, up at the top of the box right there. 
They want to wind up. They want to take two or three steps, get that big sidearm ripped, get their hands two feet out away from them. White just has that super quick release, that overhand shot that's just so accurate, and it, it is moving too. Tars again, winning on the face here. Getting all the personnel out there that they want. As they'll take a step in. They lead at a score of 2-0 in the early going in this one. Lose their footing over the top. No push and we're going to have a hold called. Yeah, it's an unfortunate call for Lenore Ryan. I mean, there's nothing you can really do yeah. there. It's up to the official to make that call, but Metz just slipped there and kind of ran right into the Lenore Ryan defender. Yeah, loose ball, and so no, no time served on that. As Hansen controls. Swings it over. Tars looking to drive. Running through. That's White. Handles. Pick set there by the Tars. Nicely fought through by the Bears. And now swung back over near side as Metz. And Tars just lose the handle right there. Trying to battle back. But Lenore Ryan's going to come up with it. They've got numbers here on the fast break if the Tars can't get back. As White's hung up. What a beautiful trail check to cause a turnover. He's getting in there, trying to come up with the ground ball. Let's see if the Tars can come up with it, and they do. Excellent pickup there by Eisenhower. Yeah, great talk there by Eisenhower. We could hear him here in the press box screaming, me, 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 letting Connor Thornton know there that he's going to pick up that ground ball and go forward. Great communication. Mehdi stays back. And, uh, you know, right there, Justin White, an, an unforced error there on his part, losing the handle on the ball. But you love seeing that. So often you see young players, especially, they lose the ball and they kind of sit there and sulk for a little bit. Not Justin White. Immediately took off, got the ball back, fought back for his team. Love seeing that uh, from a player. Forget about it. You lose the ball. Okay, that happens. Go get it back. He did. Quick pass. Tars inside there, but nicely defended by the Bears. They'll pull that one out, swing it back behind. Coming around, right side. Quick inlet pass. Tars can't make the handle, but they're there to back it up. Yeah, this is the first time we're seeing the second line here out for the Tars. It's a hot one here on this black turf field. So going to see lots of substitutions. Absolutely, as uh, it is a warm one today here in Orlando. Tars with a shot right into the stick there of Pensabeni. Nice save. Makes the clear up towards midfield. And Lenore Ryan will control. Temperature at game time, 85 degrees. No real chance of rain either, as it is a warm one today. See a lot of um, a lot of umbrellas out there in the stands, trying to keep the sun off of them. And, uh, well, it's needed today. As Lenore Ryan drives down the alley, they'll work it back behind. That X over left side, getting their personnel on that they need. Yeah, and I believe we've got the second line or a mixture of the second line out here for Lenore Ryan. I see Bryce Reese and the freshman here, 46. Uh, Jarrett Hoff, who's been very productive for the Bears this year as a freshman. And let pass right on top of Kachadurian and the Lenore Ryan Bears are on the board for the first time today as that just slipped by. Uh, the Tars there couldn't quite uh, get over. Yeah, great oh, ball one. movement by the Bears there, hitting it to the backside, swinging it back. Great crease cut down towards the goal and just to finish over Shahe Kachadurian's shoulder. Yeah, not much you can do if you're a goalie in that situation right there. Just uh, kind of kind of pops out at you and, you know, you turn your head and all of a sudden the ball's, uh, ball's in the back of the net already. Face-off coming there. First face-off win for the Bears. So they'll work it down into their offensive end. Right on top of the crease there, Evan Voss credited with that goal for the Bears. As again, the uh, Bears will control up top center, get their personnel on. A little bit slower game. Lenore Ryan came out in that Tampa game right out of the gate and just punched Tampa in the mouth. Uh, they just came out firing, got out, got four quick goals. They had a three-goal lead early in that game. And with that, uh, just kind of managed the momentum of the early going of that game. And it's not what we have seen from either team in the early going on this one. Much more settled approach uh, to this game so far. 
Ball worked back X. Swung up and over as Lenore Ryan looks to take a step in. Nicely defended by the Tars. They're there. Worked side right. Looking for that inlet pass again. Nicely covered. Swung over. Top center. Shot from outside. Misses the mark. No save made. Just went over top of the cage. No reset. 17 seconds on the shot clock. Yeah, it looks like the Tars are in a zone here. They were very condensed on that possession. Uh, I'm not sure why we switched to a zone there, but Tars in the zone from X. Ball worked up top left. Quickly swung down and wow, right on the doorstep. Lenore, can't, Lenore Ryan can't find the 36-foot square cage right there and just missed that one. Up over the GLE. Quick shot and a quick goal there for the Bears. Just sneaking that one past catch of Durian. Great placement there. Yeah, it's a great feed and a great catch by the Bears there to make that, make that play work. Low shot clock time, two seconds left when the shot went off. They kind of just force-fed force the crease and found a nice one up there and put it in. Yeah, one of those situations where you're just kind of hoping for something, turning uh, nothing into something, and Lenore Ryan was able to right there. First two face-offs won by the Tars. Next one won by the uh, Bears. Tars looked like they were almost tripped there, but were not, and the Bears will come away with that one. Yeah, that's a missed call there by the official on that trip. He, he was reaching for his whistle, and then after it was kind of a scrum, just decided not to let the guys play. Well, let's let it be decided by the players on the field uh, today. As the best games are always the games where you don't notice the officials. As uh, well, Lenore Ryan gets up ahead of steam. Meets a defender, slide comes, nicely picked up by the Tars D. Work back up, top center, driving down the alley, shot taken, and I thought Cacciadurian might have caught a piece of that, but guess not. Oh, just, that one just, just sailed high of him. The, uh, the defenseman, I believe that was Tesla, got a stick on that to force the, pet, the shot to go way wide. Well, coming in, side right now for the Bears. They'll lose their footing, well defended by the Tars, showing up top center. Again, looking to drive, pick set, fought through. Looking for that trail check. Don't need it as that shot's going to miss the mark by about 12 feet. Yeah, that's, uh, that's Bryce Reese. Very shifty, uh, fast offensive mini for Lenore Ryan, but also has a 22% shot percentage on the year. Lenore Ryan shooting 50, averaging uh, 51 shots per game. They, they, they like to shoot the ball. They certainly do. Skip pass up top center, misses the mark. Ball at midfield. That's going to be over and back. That's going to be Tars' ball. Pick it up and go, says the Tars. They've got numbers. Can they turn this into a fast break? Work it over. Left side, right side. Can't quite connect on it. And Tars will slow this one down here. Yeah, we've played a, a good amount of defense for the past couple minutes. I think it's a good idea for the Tars to go ahead and settle this ball, play 6v6 offense. Yeah, slow things down a little bit, but... You know, kind of looks like a big old meatball out there as that shot is going to be uh, well deflected out towards the top of the box, but picked back up. Tars control, personnel on as William Metz controls, swings it over, right side. Tars looking to get underneath. They do right over the shoulder of the six foot five Pitts of Benny, and Logan Myers has found the back of the net to give the Tars back the lead. Yeah, Logan Myers has really found his dodging uh, specialty here on the Tars. Those down the alley, low wing, kind of getting physical dodges where he puts it in his left hand, brings it back to his right, and just kind of finishes wherever the goalie's not. Uh, he's had plenty of those to finish the season out here, and a great just dodge and solo attempt by him. Tell you what, so, uh, you know, uh, for a freshman to show the ability to find the open space right there is it, it, so impressive. So many times... You're one-on-one -on -one with the goalie, and especially for younger players, they just kind of let it rip. They know the hit's coming. They know the slide is coming. They want to get rid of the ball. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of lacrosse knowledge there from Myers, hanging on to it, finding the back of the net, finding uh, that open space as that uh, face-off eventually will be won by the Tars. You've got Connor Thornton up there in uh, uncharted territory. As again, just a very different pace in this game than what we've seen in other games this season. Tar is certainly uh, kind of setting the tone here in the early going. Nice pick set there by White. Give and go. 
but nobody's going to go. Now he'll go. Quick inline pass, quick shot, misses the mark, backed up by the Tars. Yeah, one of the things I also noticed watching the Lenore Ryan Bears games, their defensemen are not afraid to go after that that missed shot for the end line, uh, for that end line ball. They'll they'll get a bunch of those. So will Pescabeni. As Tars will slide around, quick pass, quick shot, quick goal on the quick stick. Now the Tars are moving quick. Grant Hansen. Now, now, how, did you know your brother could jump that high, Roy? Yeah, yeah he's, he's got, got some. He's got some left, man. He's, yes, he does. He's definitely got more than uh, my brother. Uh, he can definitely get up there. Um, I unfortunately was not gifted with that. And we've got a timeout here from the Bears to kind of talk it over as the Tars have kind of controlled the pace the whole first quarter here. Three minutes and 25 seconds left in the first. Jack Johnstone credited with that goal on the assist from uh, Grant Hansen. Uh, but a, a, a beautiful quick stick there. A great handle by uh, Johnstone. Um, just a, a nice way to start it off. And you love making the other coach call the timeout. Yeah, it's, you, it's a you nice thing to do. say. Yep, Grant put that high and away, uh, far from where any Lenore Ryan uh, defender could get it. And I mean, the garbage man, Jack Johnstone, you just know anywhere around the crease, he's getting that ball in his stick and he's putting it in the basket. First team All American, first team All Sunshine State Conference, the sophomore out of Newman, Georgia, Jack Johnstone. And uh, just an excellent play there on the feed from uh, Grant Hansen. Also, uh, honorable mention All American uh, for him. First team all Sunshine State Conference uh, sophomore out of uh, New Jersey. And, um, well, Tars, like you said, really setting the tone here in the early going of this one, playing the game they want to do. If you're Coach Lewis, Roy, what are you saying to the team right now? Yeah, I think so far we've, we've had the shots we wanted, 6v6. I do think we need to tighten it up a bit on defense. We've gotten lost on the inside with their um, – with their offense, they they run some great cutters. They found some people. They found some some success with picks. One of the other things is I don't want to go man down against this Lenore Ryan team. They've got a great man up unit. They run a four uh, a, a one four one with two guys in the crease. Lots of movement, so they're very productive there. So we're going to keep try and keep the penalties to a minimum. Keep winning the faceoffs, and everything's been going great so far. So there's not much to really critique from Coach Lewis. He just wants to keep the energy up. Mentioned that Lenore Ryan, forty-eight percent on man-up opportunities this year. I mean, that is outstanding. Fantastic. Uh, Tars, who are who are you know decent at man-up, twenty-three percent. Yeah, I would I'd say uh, man-up has not been our our strong suit this year. We've we've dominated in almost all facets of the game, but the man-up unit um, has is is not one of them this year. Running six on six, though, you can score six on six yeah. goals. You're, you're, you're doing pretty good. 6v6 six six is definitely where the Tars, the Tars dominate. Here's Lenore Ryan after the faceoff win. Work at top right. Tars say if you're going to go, you're going to have to go lefty. And they'll work that one back behind. Ball at X, swung up, right side, top center now. Yep, there's a, a momentary guy open there on the crease. Lenore Ryan didn't get it to him, but those are the things that the Tars are going to want to touch up. As Lenore Ryan finds them, you hope that the defense can also pick that up and, and make that extra half a step. Beautiful off-stick high save on the quick shot. Kachadurian comes up with that one, but Tars can't handle the clear, and that's going to be picked up by the Bears. Yeah, great job by the, the Bears getting in the face of Kachadurian there so he couldn't make that clear pass. Calls in the turnover. Bears get another chance. As the Bears coming around. Up past the GLE. Shot taken. Misses the mark. See, Catch Durian holds that position so well. Holds on that pipe. So often you see goalies start to move off that post as the player comes up over the GLE too soon. Catch Durian holds it, holds it, holds it. He's in the right position, forcing that shot to go wide. As the shot's taken off the post. And wow. That's going to be won by the that's Tars. The ball. Yep, that's Great the hustle. Tars ball. Great hustle there. Blake Barwick ran that one down. I believe we're going to see Justin White get the ball. Nope. Eisenhower get the ball here for the clear. Plenty of time for the clear. They'll swing it over. Tars are up and across. You've got White staying back as Tesler was handling. 
tell you what, that's what you can do as a um, as a defender right there. You know, throwing checks, doing all that stuff's nice, but running that down right there. It's such a great play there by the Tars. Yeah, I, I do wish there was some sort of statistic for it because it's such a it's such a a deal breaker for an offense when the opposite team's defense gets the br the backup on you. As White struggles with the handle right there, trying to come up with the ground ball and eventually does right out at the midfield line, but controls with one minute remaining in this first quarter of action. 30 seconds on the shot clock for the Tars as they'll look to drive. Nothing there. Pull that back out. Shot in traffic, and that finds Pennsylvania's stick. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure if I'm a fan of that shot there. With You've got about a good 20 seconds left. I mean, contested shot from 14, 13, 14 yards against a great goalkeeper to then give them possession for 40 seconds for the rest of this quarter. As the Bears will work it over. Side right, under 30 seconds remaining in this. Lots of subs coming off here. 20 seconds, plenty of time for Lenore Ryan to go to the cage. And you really only need about eight seconds or so to uh, move it quickly, and we are with 12 seconds remaining now. Lenore Ryan looking to get that pass at eight seconds. Trying to get that final shot off. They're going to have to let it rip. They do. Save made. Catch a durian, and that will do it for this. No, three-tenths of a second left, rather. Spoke too soon. Three-tenths too soon to be exact, and they're, Lenore Ryan's just going to throw that one into traffic. Yeah, that shot there was actually going wide by Rice Reese and catch Durian got a stick on it anyway, going going way outside. But great save regardless. And nicely done there by uh, Shahe Catch Durian as the Tars will take a 4-2 to two lead into the break after the first quarter of action. And uh, Roy, a, uh, a, a good start here for the Tars. First time they're playing in the in the Sunshine in a uh, NCAA tournament game. Yeah, yeah. The, the, the Tars are fired up to play. I mean, lots of firsts this season. They just want to keep that going. Um, and the Bears fought, fought back a little bit there in the, four, in, the, uh, in the beginning or the end of the first quarter, winning a couple face-offs, getting a couple more possessions, settling down a little bit. We really saw their offense start to click a little bit. They found the looks they, they wanted. Um, they've just missed the cage a couple times. Yeah, it's nice to see a team come out, look composed, look poised, uh, as the Tars have looked in that first quarter when you're in this first. But as you said, it is that season of first, lots of first this season. And uh, with that, the Tars are used to this. It's not really uncharted territory uh, so much for them as they are uh, ready to roll as the... Uh, the as the number one seed in the South region and um, with that getting a bye, they've been off for almost two weeks. Roy, how does that affect a team being off for that long, having that, that long of a break? Uh, does it get you out of your groove? What do you need to do to kind of stay in it? Yeah, so they, once they knew who was playing on, who they were playing on May 7th, so who it could be, they've already seen the Tampa Spartans once and handled them fairly easily with a 12 to six win at home. And, um, so they really, the coaches got to prepare for pretty much just Lenore Ryan. So if you, um, if Tampa wins, we've already done Tampa. They've got a week to prepare. But if not, the coaches have two weeks to kind of prepare, or a week, I'm sorry, to prepare for uh, Lenore Ryan as well. So they're plenty rested. Lenore Ryan had to come down to, to hot Florida for the game uh, earlier in the week. So I'm sure the Tars here are definitely well hydrated and well rested. So Tars will win that face-off as uh, face-offs have been going uh, the way of the Tars. Six to two for them on the afternoon so far. So key winning that face-off battle. Both teams uh, winning the face-off battle for uh, this year. 56% for Lenore 55% on the season for the Tars as Tars. Step it up above the GLE. Look to roll underneath. Nicely defended. They'll swing it back left. Undefended there by the Bears. Now to White. Now over to Hansen. Looks to drive to his left. No, comes back right. Shot taken. Save made. Ground ball is going to be battled for. And won by Lenore Ryan. They'll touch it. The Tars will knock it loose. And that will be the Tars ball. We're going to get a fresh 60-second uh, clock too as well. 
Yeah, Grant, mo great move up there on the short stick, D mid by Grant Hanson. Got his hands free. Just an, an absolutely great save by Pescabeni. That was a, a gorgeous save on the low shot. Tars diving the crease. And Is that in. in? It's in. No, no. Oh. Crease violation. And we've got, we've got uh, out there, Logan Myers gets his helmet knocked off. He'll yeah. put his helmet back on. I'm really surprised we started play with his helmet off on the field uh, with Myers not having his helmet on. That was an interesting uh, move there, but he'll check off. Yep, we're, and we're a, little, we're a little further away today than we usually are. So usually I could tell you if, if uh, Logan Myers was in the crease there or not, but we're just a little too far today, couldn't see clearly. Yeah, we, are, uh, we have a good vantage point um, being high, but it's just uh, a little bit far away, especially with the uh, track out there. Nonetheless, as Lenore Ryan loses their footing, Tars pick it up. Heading back the other direction now. Tars with a fast break opportunity, and they will quickly slow that one yeah. down. Yep, just going to do a little bit of a slow break here, see if they got any cutters. If not, hold on for offensive personnel. As they will check on for the Tars. Tars handling back behind another pick set. Easily fought through there by the Bears. Tars taking it all the way up. As Johnstone controls, swings it over. Myers now stepping in. Goes to his right, back to his left. Over, top right, sets a pick. Tars looking to move underneath, nothing doing. He'll swing it around, back behind. Coming around at, at X, right side, quickly swung up. Hands free, shot taken, and that's just going to miss over top of the cage on the high bounce shot. Tell you what, I like that play, though. Yeah, a little different field than we're used to playing on the, the field here I heard from the players is very bouncy. So usually on our on our Sandspur home turf, that ball's not going that high over the net or maybe even going in. But here at Bishop Moore, that ball is bouncing well over the cage. Such a hard thing to judge as White takes a step in, looks to roll underneath, he'll take it around. Comes around, shot taken, misses the mark. We're going to say a save made there by Pensabeni. And ground ball is going to be picked up by the Bears. Those, those long bounce shots are just so hard to judge. So hard to judge. And, and, you know, you make that move out as a goalie. You're trying to explode out. And it's just it's a different position now, too, with the amount of turf fields that you play on because the ball bounces so differently on turf than it does on grass. And there's a shot. There's a big save by Katja Durian on the Lenore Ryan shot. Tars just didn't step up there. Slide never really came. I've, I've actually just been informed from our friends over at the In the Crease podcast. His last name is Pesabeni, not Pescabeni. That is our that is our fault there. Pe Pesabeni, all right. Pesabeni. I'll tell you what they did. I should know that considering he lives 10 minutes from me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. But I tell you what, those guys do a fantastic job. Another big save! As Diesel, as they will tell you, comes up with a huge save, stick side eye. Can't back it up, though. Uh, great show by them this week. Uh, having a selector on from the uh, selection committee. And you're interested, you're looking at all these calculations, RPIs, rankings, strengths of schedule and everything. They do an excellent job of doing, uh, of explaining it to everybody in the end of the crease podcast. Shot right on top of the crease, and that finds the back of the net as nobody's going to be fast enough to turn around and make that save right there. Yeah, can't be playing two minutes of defense. Defense kind of just a little tired out there. You can see it. Evan Tesler caught ball, ball watching with a, with a crease or a cutter from up top, just finishes it high. Yeah, it's tough. It's harder to run backwards than it is to run forwards. And playing defense on your heels like that for two minutes, you're just going to wear down. Yeah, Kachadurian made two great saves there, but the LR Bears were able to get both rebounds and kind of just keep their possession. Miles Moffitt with the goal there. Ball on the deck. Post, Body's no hitting call. the... Yeah. Well, it's been a clean game so far. Let's find some wood we can knock on. As uh, No penalties yet. Quick pass across, and there's another quick goal by the Bears. And Lenore Ryan has come back in yeah. this one quickly to tie this up. Yep, without a doubt, a little bit of a missed call there, but, hey, 
They, uh, same thing happened with the Lenore Ryan versus Tampa game. The refs were letting them play. Not a whole lot of calls being made. Um, I have a feeling we're going to see the same thing here today. This is the Lenore Ryan that we saw against Tampa, quite frankly. That is showing up right now in the 10-minute uh, and 21-second mark of the second quarter. This is the team that we saw come out and score four quick goals on Tampa. Lacrosse is a game of streaks. Two quick goals by Lenore Ryan on just a uh, bit of a lapse there by the Tars D and then just a really fantastic play by Lenore Ryan. Last few faceoffs run by the uh, Bears as well. As they'll work it over right side. Down below, quickly swung up top. Shot taken, save made, or deflected Deflected it. on the way to yep. catch Durian. So should not be a shot clock reset, and it's not. There's 40 seconds left on the shot clock here. Always love it uh, when your defender makes a save for you. You don't have to make it as a goalie. And that's just going to hit a whole bunch of nobody. Complete miscommunication there from the Bears. And the unforced error is going to go in favor of the Tars. As Eisenhower will control. Bringing it up the field, near side. Catch a Durian is unchallenged, nobody on him. We've seen, Tars have seen that 10 man ride before. Nope. No, but not this time, and Tars just, mm, an unforced error there, and they got a little bit of a funk going on right now as the Bears take back over possession. You know, Lenore Ryan is on that streak, they make that kind of error, just an unforced error. Tars unable to uh, capitalize on it, however. Yeah, Tars have not played a whole lot of offense this quarter. So when we do get the ball back, we're going to want to see a nice long possession out of the Tars. Quick pass right on top of the crease. The second one we've seen like that for Lenore Ryan, and they have their first lead of the afternoon. Yeah, Lenore Ryan's just dominating off ball. Lots of cutters, lots of people wide open on the backside. They haven't necessarily beaten their man one-on-one -on -one a lot on defense, but they're just finding the, the open cutters off ball. Moffitt credited with the goal there. And we are going to have a timeout called by head coach Chris Lewis. And uh, well, it's a game of streaks. Lenore Ryan's on one right now, and Tars are gonna try and shut it down, come out of this one, and just a couple of, uh, couple of breakdowns, but Lenore Ryan has found a seam in the Tars defense. Yeah, they have. They've found, a, they've found great success, just like Florida Tech did earlier in the regular season, and just kind of force feeding the crease um, on the Tars defense, because we like to play that, that uh, pr high pressure outside the box defense. Sometimes it leaves those, those crease guys open on the backside. Coach Lewis is just going to want to calm the guys down here. We've, when we have possession of the ball in this game, we've been able to score. We've been able to get good shots. This whole second quarter in the back half of the, of the first quarter, Lenore Ryan's had the ball, and, and if we don't have the ball, we can't score. Um, so no matter how many saves Kachadurian makes, no matter how many times Lenore Ryan throws the ball out of bounds, if we don't get it into our offensive end, uh, Lenore Ryan's just going to eventually keep scoring. Uh, for Kachadurian, four saves for him, five goals allowed. Pensabini, uh, six saves and four goals allowed for him um, on the afternoon so far as it has uh, been a uh, kind of a, a tale of, of two different quarters almost. Tars very dominant in that first quarter, slower paced game, different look game, more settled uh, by both teams. Lenore Ryan has come out and said, you know what we're going to do? We're going to force feed the crease. We're just going to work it down there, try and get that pass into somebody, somebody might pick it up and they've had success with it, past two goals, mirror images of each other, one on the left side, one on the right, just kind of found that seam in between the Tars D uh, and have had success. Yeah, we're gonna see, also gonna, we're gonna see a little bit of a face-off change here with Lake Baker taking the face, the Penn State transfer. Uh, Garvin, kind of known for his, his quick, his quick clamp. Lake Baker known for his ground ball ability, kind of 
his ability to have the ball in his stick. So with a lot of these balls coming out 50-50 ground balls, Tars are going to make a little switch here, see what Lake Baker can do on the face. I think we've had one or two faceoffs that have won, uh, been won cleanly by either team. Tars lead it 6-4 to four on the faceoff battle, but I don't think any have uh, maybe one or two have been fielded cleanly. So we're going to do some uh, coaching out there, I guess, reset things. Tars battling for that clamp out there. And yeah, they're a very different style uh, that you see from Baker. And still on the deck, Baker gets in there, but Lenore Ryan's going to come up with it. They'll work it back through their D. That's Benny Controls. Swings it far side and a successful clear up uh, four. The Bears back into their offensive end where they have spent a lot of time this second quarter. All up top right. Roy, you're a short stick defensive mini uh, specialist. What do you do in this situation um, trying, to, trying to switch momentum back to your side? Yeah, I think for the short stick defensive midi, you, you got to know your role, right? So you're not the guy necessarily out there causing the most cause turnovers. You want to leave that to your poles. You want to just play good, uh, good short stick D. You want to make sure as little as possible you're being slid to. That way the defense doesn't have to rotate as much. And that's going to be your job out there. All coming in top left. Looking for that lane. Passed across. Wide open. Big save. Catch Durian. Just time and space galore there uh, for Evan Voss, but a huge save for Catch Durian. Voss will control again. All back right, swung up top right, and that's going to be off the post, out far side, backed up by the Bears. First shot of this possession was a great shot, great opportunity. Second shot, not so much. Tars might be clamping down a bit on him here on D. As the full whole right side is completely exposed by Lenore Ryan, completely stacking everybody on the left side. Yeah, the, the Tars are a little more condensed here. I think they're in a little bit of a zone to switch things up on the LR offense here. Always seems to be the problem with the zone. It always seems to start collapsing as, as the possession goes on. Um, always still have to maintain that position out just a little bit. Ball back left, swung up top left, hands free, shot taken, save made, catch a Durian. He is getting tested and coming up aces right now. Back right, back left. Swung over, right side, skipped up all the way top left. Tars are there with a stick. Right on the hands there of Jared Huff to deflect that shot over high. Yeah, I think Rollins' rationale here is that pretty much all of Lenore Ryan's goals have come from the inside on the crease. Uh, so we're going to kind of let them take those outside shots. At least that's going to be the battles we want. Yeah, give your goalie a chance. Uh, it's, you, you can make those saves if you're catching dirt. You can't make the quick stick save right on top of the crease. And there's the pass is going to miss the mark. Out of bounds, back behind. That'll be Tars' ball. Yep, the Tars need a nice, long offensive possession here. As you can see, the D is plenty tired from playing pretty much eight minutes of defense here in the second quarter. As Eisenhower swings it up there to White, he'll step it across midfield. And we've got a flag down. As Tars will be one man up. First laundry on the field that we've seen so far today. Yep, and I believe we've got an offsides penalty here, but I don't think LR knows who it's on. So they won't be sending an extra to risk two men off on, on offsides. It's an interesting move with that. You know, if you're offsides, you're offsides, but it has to be that person who is offsides. Can't be the other guy. And I guess that's, you know... I've always thought of it as a technical foul, not no necessarily a personal foul. But uh, nonetheless, that's the way it is. As Myers looks to drive, rolls back uh, over the back, back in the shot. What do you call that shot there? Roy? What is that? Uh, it's a, a behind the back. I'm not sure if that's our greatest shot option with 26 seconds left. But 
He got it on cage, forced uh, Pesabeni to, to make a save, so can't be that un unhappy with it. And the Tars still keep possession going man up. Those are the ones that, um, you know, sometimes they find the back of the net. And as a goalie, you are not expecting that at all. You are just never expecting to see something like that. But we do see it a lot more uh, these days. And, and a lot of times you find success. And, you know, maybe not. If, that if there is a time to take it, maybe it is that time. Because you're going to have possession regardless of, of what happens. Tars man up first time today. As we mentioned uh, earlier, 23% on the season for them as they work it over. Side left, top center, and over top left. Cutter start coming now, moving through, working over, side right, pass down right, skip pass up to White. He'll pull that one back out, nicely defended there by the Bears. White swings it over, side right, back to White. Now up, top left, Mets. And ball down low, and that'll kill off the penalties. Tars not able to get a shot off. Now they'll rip one. That'll be knocked down there by Lenore Ryan. Yeah, the Tars the had the, the, look, the look they wanted on that man up, but the window just closed a little too soon for the Tars. Tars will come around and let that shot go on a very low angle. 11 seconds left here on the shot clock for the Tars. Take a step in. Hansen comes to his left, gets the shot off. That misses the mark again. That'll go out of bounds, and that will be uh, turned over to the Bears. They'll back that one up, but with one second on the shot clock, it was going to be theirs nonetheless. I'll tell you what, I, I, don't th I don't think that is necessarily a bad possession. Yeah, you didn't come away with the goal there, but... You had possession for, well, <laughs> the whole shot clock. You, had, you ran some time off. You gave your defense a break there. I think that's actually successful possession for the Tars. Yeah, forced Pesabeni to make a save and, uh, and use the whole shot clock, rest your defense a little bit, and get back out there. As the Bears control, looking to drive. They'll skip it over top right. And yeah, that, that the only person who is open right now is the person furthest away from the ball carrier, uh, which is what you want to do as a defense. And again, that high shot taken is going to go well. That high bouncer is going to go well over top of the cage. Out of bounds back behind. Backed up by the Bears. Yep, Rollins wasn't man-to-man. -man. They're back to zone here with the end line restart. Look to see a skip pass probably from Lenore Ryan to the backside. They've got it across. Tars doing an excellent job of moving, but that outside shot is finally going to find the back of the net as Will Canta beats Durian to give the Bears a 6-4 to four lead. Yeah, I'm not sure if the, if the zone is quite working for the Tars here today. The sticks aren't in enough lanes, not batting down enough of those passes, and Lenore Ryan's had success stepping into those gaps and finishing from 12 to 13 yards. As we see Lake here on the on another face-off. Win the clamp there, but that ground ball will be battled for by everybody and be picked up by the Bears. It has been all Bears at the face-off X here in this second quarter. We'll swing it over left side, hands free, shot taken right over top of the cage, out of bounds back behind, backed up by Lenore Ryan. Bringing it in right side now. Off top left, side left. Looks like we're back into the zone here, I think. And there's the switch right up top. A little skip step there from nope. the Bears. We're, we're in man here. I'll work back behind. Everybody clearing out. Well, Nor Ryan said we're going to play man to man. We're going to go one on one. That shot's going to miss by about three feet. With 35 seconds on the shot clock, Bears will bring it in back left, swing it back to X. Top left, top center now. Bears swing it over top right and back behind. Looking to drive. It's not there. Ball back out. Lenore Ryan taking their time on this possession. 
And that long bounce shot finds the back of the net and Catch Durian wants another chance at that one right there. Yeah, I think that was deflected off of Davis Mosier in the middle of the field there for the Tars, kind of off his stick. Tried to get a piece of it and bounced up into the top corner there for LR. The Tars definitely got to figure something out here on defense for this LR offense. I mean, we haven't had the ball, but we haven't been able to stop LR's offense either today. Yeah, it, you know, it, it, it was working out in the early going. Uh, some aggressive man-to-man -man play, some changes to um, zone. The zone was working as well. And Lenore Ryan has had an answer for the Tars' uh, defensive switches every single step of the way, though. That's a push in the back there. Not called, but Tars get it anyway. As they will come up with a, a face-off, first kind of face-off one here in a while. Work it over to Hanson as he will control. I tell you what, Lenore Ryan not showing uh, Tars or Hanson a whole lot of respect there, standing well out at the restraining line. And you start feeling good uh, as the uh, Bears are right now. They're going to start stepping up that defensive pressure as Tars looking to drive, nothing doing. Pull that back out, coming around right side. Swing it up, top right, top left now. As Tars lose the handle, but pick it back up. There does Myers. Takes a step in, gets a shot off. Gets deflected on the way to the cage, but nonetheless, William Metz is there to back that up. 30 seconds to shoot here for the Tars. So he'll work it back through X, coming around right side. He'll roll underneath as the Lenore Ryan defender hits the deck, shot taken, hands free, misses the mark, and out of bounds back behind. No reset there, thought... Uh, Pennsylvania might have caught a piece of that coming around. Right side looking for that roll underneath. They do, and uh, can't get, quite get anything on that. Loose ball push with possession. No, crease violation yeah. by the Tars. There was a push there, but crease violation first, so the bar go ball goes to LR. As the Bears are up over and across midfield. Yep, can clearly see some frustration here from yeah. the Tars offense, just kind of forcing some stuff that... Normally we wouldn't force because um, they, they haven't had the ball in a while. So those playmakers want to make plays. They want to take it to the cage. But coach on the sideline has to, has to let them know we've got to be cool. We've got to be calm. We have to play our game. Yeah. And forcing it to the cage is, is definitely not the Tars game. Yeah, you know, what, what got you here? Uh, it, it wasn't that move, that brute force, you know, move trying to roll underneath trying to uh, be that physical play, uh, going one-on-one, -on -one, uh, just trying to get that extra edge, that extra step up past the GLE. That's just not Tatar's game, and trying to play a game that's not yours is rarely ever successful, especially uh, in an NCAA quarterfinal. With that, uh, we are at the 26-second uh, mark uh, remaining here in this second quarter. 7-4 to lead. For the Lenore Ryan Bears, they coming into this. Tar is, of course, favored as the number one seed in the South. Uh, but once you get here at this position, uh, it's anybody's game. Uh, this South region is completely wide open, uh, as far as I'm concerned. Um, some great teams playing on, going on right now. We've got four games going on right now. We're one of those four. Uh, so you've got another South region game, two North region games going on right now as the winner of this game will take on uh, the winner of Limestone and U Indy uh, a week from today. As with this, 26-27 um, seconds remaining in this second quarter. Lenore Ryan will have the ball. And obviously you would imagine hold for that final shot. Trying to get just get one more, maybe double up the Tars going in to the half. So I'll work it up top right. Tars pressuring out. Well, high. Now, looking for that dodge. It's not there. Nicely picked up. Up top center, top left. Five seconds for the Bears to shoot. They'll roll. They'll shoot. They'll miss the mark. Out of bounds, back behind. Triple zeros on the clock. That'll do it for the first half of action for Bishop Moore High School here in Orlando, Florida. For Roy Hansen, my name's Clark Sprinkle. We'll take a break and be back in about 10 or 12 minutes' time.
And welcome back to Harry Nelson Field here on the campus of Bishop Moore in Orlando, Florida, where the Lenore Rhine Bears lead your Rollins College Tars a score of 7-4. Hi, everybody. Clark Sprinkle back with you here for the second half, joined by Roy Hansen. And Roy, the uh, Tars started out great, uh, really came out, dominated that first quarter of action. They had a nice lead in control of the game. Second quarter, different story really dominated by Lenore Ryan, controlling the ball pretty much the entire second quarter. Yeah, it started with the ground balls for Lenore Ryan. They've really dominated this uh, this ground ball battle off the faceoff and uh, on the faceoff and not on the faceoff. Um, they've had a couple of times where Kachadurian makes a great save, but the ball just kind of has happened to come right back in their stick to extend possessions. Um, I expect to see the Tars change up a lot or a little bit here on defense, try not to go to that zone as much where Lenore Ryan's had a lot of success. And I also expect to see a little bit of a change up uh, strategically face-off wise uh, to get maybe Ike up here on the wing, Justin Eisenhower up here on the wing um, and get in on those ground balls. Seven to six on face-offs is the statistic, but that doesn't really tell the story. Uh, seven to six in, in favor of the Tars. The story has been basically utter dominance by Lenore Ryan in that second quarter, which has led to them getting out to this uh, to this three goal lead. Lenore Ryan coming into this, um, uh, the uh, four seed, if I'm not mistaken, Tars are five the seed. five seed. I'm sorry, yes, that's right, five seed. Of course, all the uh, all the um, all the higher seeds won, uh, and then uh, Tars the number one seed in this. And I tell you what, it is completely even uh, out there. Two very evenly matched teams. It's just which team, which Rollins College Tars team is going to come out and start this uh, second half, which uh, Lenore Ryan team is going to come out to start this second half. Tars have been down before, though, this season. They've had to they fight have. back. And I, I tell you what, you'll love to see that. It, teams that just go out and utterly dominate the entire team, as soon as they're faced with a little bit of adversity, they crumble a lot of the time. Not really the case for the Tars here. No. They've had to fight back. They have. They, they fought back against... Uh, a great number two seed limestone early in the season. They fought back against a very underrated Florida Tech team, and they also fought back against the Conference Carolinas uh, champion in Barton. As we are underway for the second half of action, and that faceoff is going to be won by the Bears to, saw, to start things off. So they will try and set the tone on this one early. Roy, what do you, what, if you're Coach Lewis, what do you tell the Tars there at the break? Yeah, so I think we need to get back to our defensive roots, get out high pressure, um, force other teams to create turnovers. We've played really sunken in, which is typically what Lenore, how Lenore Ryan plays defense. But for us, it's just kind of not what we do. We've gotten to that, I guess, it, some exhaustion. And, and a quick shot from up high, about 13 yards out, finds the back of the net for the Bears. Quick ball movement, just gets right past uh, off stick by on Chidurian. Yeah, the, the, the Tars just look like they're chasing on defense. There's, for some reason, everyone, we're always rotating, even if there's not a slide here. I'm not sure how we're not seeing this next pass. That was clearly the next pass. I don't know how we didn't get out there. Yeah, you see Tars uh, kind of leaned over at that hip, their hips a lot. A lot of sticks reaching out, not playing with their feet. Uh, at the moment. Face-off coming. Tars would love to get one here. And Lenore Ryan comes away with it. Bears touched up in the box. Work it over. Left side. Hands free. K save there by Katja Durian. Off stick high. They're testing him off stick high. He comes up aces right there, though. Maybe that could be the spark. The Tars need to get things going here in the second half. As they'll work it over into the offense of him. Barwick controls. All worked over side right for the Tars. Can played a lot of defense, a lot of defense there in that second quarter. Can't start off the third quarter like that. Got to give him a rest. Get those tired legs untired. Have a nice long possession here for your offensive as Hansen controls. Works it back up to White. Takes it top center. All back over top left. Top center now. Nice off-ball movement from the Tars coming here, though. Hanson, nice move. 
Looking for that pass to White. Hands free and beats Pensa Benny. Stick side high. That thing was moving right there. Yeah, we need more ball movement like that at the Tars. Less selfish play. Grant Hansen had a shot. Was not a great shot, but he had one at 13 yards. Elected to pass it off to one of our best shooters on the team, Justin White, and just cranks to the top left corner for a goal. And that was in the absolute corner, too. Uh, I mean, that was just a great shot placement. Uh, and a nice rip there by White. Take it back to a three-goal game. Stars will come away with the face there. Quickly work it down as Garvin back there at the X. Ball at X for the Tars. They work it back behind. They got nobody out there right now. Long change here for the Tars. They counted two white jerseys and six uh, dark gray jerseys. By the way, if you are making jerseys out there, I will say, as a commentator, the dark, dark, dark gray jerseys with the dark, dark, dark maroon red numerals, very hard to read. Yeah, it does not make it easy for it, us here up here in the box. We're trying to bring you numbers when we can and names when we can. It's just, it is hard to pick up out there, the Lenore Ryan um, jersey colors and everything. Maroon on dark gray. As uh, the blue on the white comes around, and there's Hansen with the goal. Nice, quick goal. Stick off a stick side hip on the shot, finds the back of the net, and you saw Pensabini there. He never even really made a step to it. He never really made a move. Hansen, excellent job screening the, his stick as he came around and up past the GLE. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, come shot around his defender there. Um, Pesabeni just did not see it. And with that goal, actually, all three of the Tars attackmen have surpassed the previous points record for a season of 63. Wow. Impressive stuff this year for the Tars. Record-setting year for them. And they continue uh, as a uh, face-off one there, but quickly thrown into trouble. And now worked out. Garvin came up with the face and said, I don't want it. I don't want it. Yep. I yep. want to get rid of it. Hey. To it for just a and if, if I don't know if you saw there, the Tars went to a double pole on the wings there to help with some of those ground balls, which we've had a lot of success against teams like Tampa, against teams like Florida, um, and teams like St. Louis who have great faceoff guys. So I expect to see that coming, or expect to see more of that, and I expect to see those um, those long sticks change up there at the faceoff. William Metz controls for the Tars. Double team is on. Somebody's open. That's. Jack White, who is, runs it, uh, Justin White, rather. Get my mind focused on music too much. Tars with the ball, stepping it in right on top of the crease. Nice defense there by the Bears in an excellent position there by the Tars to pull that one back out and not force a bad shot. White likes to drive. He takes a shot. And it should still be Tars. Oh, that's a, Ooh, that's a, a backside official with that call. It was close, but I, I do think... Berkman had it when the ball actually went out of bounds. Yeah, you had one official who was in great Five position yards. to call it. He yep. did not make the call. The backside official did. Nonetheless, it is Bears ball. Successful clear for them. It's pretty easy. Uh, pretty even on clears. 86% for the Tars. 87% success rate for the Bears. As they'll dance around back behind. Got the first goal of the uh, first opening goal of the second half. Tars with a quick two, though. Yeah, he, here's the Tars back to this more pressure style offense yeah. or defense that they like to run. Everybody's about seven yards out further than they have been in the uh, second quarter now. Pressure is up from the Tars as Lenore Ryan works it back behind, run through X, 30 seconds on the shot clock. Worked over, top right, looking to drive. If you're gonna go, you're gonna have to go lefty. Nothing doing, under 20 to shoot. We'll work it back behind, skip pass up. Top right, nice, nice shot. That's just gonna miss the mark. Out of bounds back behind, under 10 for the Bears to shoot now. Yeah, it was a great move by Huff. Kind of just walking through Cope and stick check there to get a wide open lefty look for himself. Nicely defended there from the Tars. Wide open, top of the box, shot taken. <laughs> 
And that's a breakdown right there from the Tars as we yeah. hit zero on the shot clock. Copen just sliding when he didn't need to there, just kind of uh, kind of going when he didn't need to up top. I mean, you've got Connor Thornton up there and the, uh, the attack went up at 15 yards. There's absolutely no reason to slide there. And Copen just, he doesn't hedge. He slides all the way, leaving his man completely wide open in the middle of the field. And that secondary slide didn't pop up there either. And with that, wide open right on top yep. right on top of the crease nobody's going to stop that and, and the, the Tars are playing great defense there as, as you said the yeah. shot clock was at zero which I don't know how that works that's exactly whole, if, if it's at zero <laughs> how does that how was that good but okay. the whole time I mean did find out before the game that the shot clock does not have a buzzer on it um, as Cachadurian comes out, gets the cause turnover, he's challenged, runs th oh, right over top of one Lenore Ryan defender. Oh. What? What is the call? We've got uh, no equipment on. You, what is the you call there? You can't start the whistle with equipment issues on the you field. Can, you cannot do that. There, there, is, there, is, there is a goal in there with an there, equipment issue. You cannot do that. Here comes the other official to come and say, no, you need yeah. to wave that off. You cannot start that. You cannot do that. That that is the rule book. I am positive of that. You can start it with him out of position. But he didn't have his glove on. You had a goalie he didn't have all of his protective equipment on. What was the call there against his award? Award. Award called against Kachadurian. He loses his glove in the process. His protective equipment. Official comes out. To do this, they should wave this off, but they restarted play. You know, this is one of those things where that should not have gone down. You can't start back play with a player yeah, without his protective equipment on. Wasn't even his, he, has, he had a, his glove off, he was putting another glove on, and his stick was on the ground. I mean, the stick doesn't stick matter. Doesn't stick matter. Can be stick on the doesn't ground, matter. But, but mean, especially for yeah. a goalie, you have to have their protective equipment on. The box is on the far side of the field from us, yeah, folks. it's going to be no goal. No goal. They yeah. wave it off. Which that is, is a, the correct the call. The correct call. That is the correct call. However, the official should not have restarted play. I tell you what, that is a, um, that's a tough thing to do for an official right there, to call a goal, a goal off, even though it is the right call. Let's say this, though. They took their time. They got it right. But they jumped a little bit to conclusions right there. Um, jumping in there and, and playing, you know, whistling play back in. No goal. As uh, across the field, we'll try and get a call for you if we can, if we can get it. Some clarification. And so let's see if we can get some clarification on the call there. So, goalie's glove was off. Whack, we were saying they should not have restarted. We are going to start Lenore Ryan with the ball. 80 seconds on the shot clock, full shot clock, like it never even happened. And Lenore Ryan, coach, is incensed about it, and quite frankly, he should be. They started play back. They should not have started play back uh, when there's a, a safety issue out there. And, you know, look, as a, as a goalie myself, um, you know, you don't wear a whole lot of pads. And when you don't have some of them out there, you really have nothing on. Uh, you know, I broke my thumb multiple times in high school playing, playing goalie when we had the, you know, the old school gloves that didn't have the goalie gloves like they have now. Uh, and that's not something that you want to risk out there. Um, so... Officials got it right after some, uh, after uh, a bit of a delay, but it's right and we're back underway. Looks like we're playing 5v5 here with Davis Mosier locking off on, uh, on a player for the LR Bears. As it, as, ooh, that's right in the top of the head. Tars dodged a bullet right there as that. Check. Uh, shots taken. Save made there by Katja Durian. Wexelblatt got that stick right on the top of the knot. Katja Durian swings it up. Nice patient clear there by Katja Durian. Yeah. 
Excellent Lamar work there. Ryan applying the pressure and catch Durian being smart, just taking his time. Important possession here for yeah. the Tar. Some momentum back where they, they started to at the beginning of the quarter with a goal, but kind of wiped away with the subsequent Lenore Ryan goal. As Tar is looking to drive. Just a weird exchange there. A little bit flat out there for both teams right now. Sometimes that's kind of what you need. As Tar is coming around right side, up past the GLE. They need to work it in the air. Yep, need to need move to, the need ball. Need to pass it. Got to move it. Got to pass Flag the ball. Down Flag there. down. Tars are going to be man up coming up. And Lenore Ryan's just going to knock that out of bounds. Yeah, a little bit of a ticky call. I'm not. I mean, that's just one that's that's up to the ref's opinion, kind of on the border there. Yeah. Uh, as you can hear some Lenore Ryan fans unhappy with it. Definitely a little, a little bit of a, a touchy call, but a call regardless. Um, but, yeah, we need to move the ball there. I mean, Berkman hanging on to the ball there that long uh, behind the yep. X, especially when I'm sure Coach Lewis was in the offense's ear to move the ball around more. Got to um, keep it hot. To Tars. start the second half. Tars man up. 0 for 1 so far. Man up opportunities this afternoon. Man up for one minute right here. They are 23% on the season. But, boy, they need uh, one of those 1 in 5 chances right now. White controls, works it over. Hanson swings it over, back left. Looking for that skip pass, not there. Back to Hanson, he's up above the GLE. Works it up top right, swung over, top left. Inlet pass, Tar shot, Tar goal! There's Blake Buell too, a substitution in there for the Tars on the man up unit this week for Jack Johnstone. Um, I believe Jack Johnstone. Um, yeah, Jack, he's out there on the side, Blake Buell. Or not Blake. I'm, I'm going to correct it. It's an easy mistake to make. I it's an easy to make mistake to make. That was Peter Buell. Peter, Peter Buell. Uh, he is the brother of Carson, Jackson, and Blake. And Blake. This is the uh, the the 10th season in a row that we've had a, a Buell on the team out there. Yep. It's a very easy mistake to make. A mistake that I have made uh, hundreds of times, I think, over the uh, past decade. But, yes, Peter Buell out there. And a shout out to uh, the rest of the Buell family yep. um, as well out of uh, Dallas, Texas. Hope they're doing well and enjoying the game here. Today. Yeah, I, they're actually here. I saw all of them earlier. That's fantastic. All, all bajillion of them. Yeah, <laughs> all Buells, all the Buells. I, I tell you what, there, there's a reason right there. I, you know, U.S. Air, whoever, making a ton of money off of uh, getting the Buells here. You know, four, five, six, however many brothers there are. Yeah, there's uh, there's four of them. Uh, but all played lacrosse here have been huge impacts on this team uh, throughout their um, career. It is a family affair here. Of course, Roy, your brother out there, Grant Plan, as well as he controls at the moment. Anson works it over to White. Ball top right. Looks to run it. He does. Beautiful move. This is the mark. Pays the price. But Tars will pick that up back behind. Nope. Berkman controls coming in the X. Looks like a big emphasis here. Tars and shoots, oh, and who's there? Tars aren't there to back it up. It's an unforced error there from the Tars. Yeah, Billy Metz on the opposite side of the field. Kind of got to have that that back there. Just caught looking at the play on the backside. Need to be aware that once Berkman dodges from X, you got to fill. The only brother of. Um, Charles, both out of Dallas as well. What is it with Dallas? Lots of Dallas. Lots of Dallas and, and lots of brothers from Dallas, I guess. As the Bears control, ball top right. They'll take a step in. 50 seconds on the shot clock. They'll work it back behind. Over top left. High pressure defense from the Tars here seems to be working in this third quarter of action. Shot from outside, finds the back of the net though on a stick side low shot and just beats um, Kachadurian there. Yep, and uh, Benjamin Copen there got a little aggressive, kind of assumed he was going to go down the alley, got beat over the top for that shot by Bryce Reese. Yeah, just a nice shot. I, you know, it just. That nice over shot, well placed. 
placed, it's moving, it, you know, look, it's not the hardest shot in the world, but it's well placed, hard place to get to it, right in the corner, and just that, you know, overhand, overhand shot, it, it might not look as pretty as that sidearm rip, but it sure counts the same, put the shot in the right place, and they're just hard to get to sometimes. Tars trail by three here in this third quarter of action, under five minutes remaining. First quarter, all Tars, second quarter, all Bears. This quarter, a little bit more even amongst most teams, but it's kind of been a back and forth, back and forth, back and forth kind of game. Neither team has quite broken out yet. Three goals is a nothing lead either. It's Lenore Ryan. Working the ball around. You see this defense, though, a lot more pressure from the Tars now. There's the switch. Back up top left. Trying to roll. Nothing doing. Trying to get the shot off. They do. Misses the mark. Catch Durian's ready for that one, too. As good as he is, you know, he is going to be 90, 85, 90% on shots outside of, you know, 10, 10 or 11 yards. Um, and he's just going to be that good at making those saves. You know, one or two might get by, but that's going to happen. You're going to get scored on in this game. That's how you respond. There's the shot right on top of the crease. Yep. And, and this is the mark. Charlie Metz there is a short stick defensive mid. You, you can't be beaten at the bottom hand there. That's not your job as a short stick D mid. You really got to be turning that defender so he doesn't get top side. Play body all the way. Yeah, we, we were saying in the break a lot of reaching uh, by the Tars. Playing defense with their sticks. You got to play with your feet. You got to be in the right position. Ball top center. Bears, so we're gonna skip it down right side. I'll pull that one back out, skip it up, top left. Hands free, shot taken, back of the net, goal Bears. Yeah, it looks like half the Tars were in zone there, half the Tars were in man. I mean, I'm really not a fan of this zone defense that the Tars have kind of gotten into all of a sudden today. Um, I think we just need to stick to our high pressure man-to-man -man offense. I mean, we're clearly getting picked apart from this zone. I know there's one thing that doesn't work, um, and that's when half the players are playing man and half the players are playing zone. It's uh, definitely, um, yeah, a little bit of a confusion out there by the Tars D, but a quick win on the face. So Tars will work it down. Tars have had success with both those defensive, those, both those defensive sets this year. It's just the zone is not working today for them. All swung up, Hanson controls. Top center. Top left as Myers steps it in and now works it back to Metz. Billy Metz. Now over to Hanson. Trying to work it in, gets a step. Needs to pass it off. No, gets a move underneath. Shot taken. Save made. Ball on the deck looking for that pickup. And Tars are going to get blown up on top of the crease. That's a clean hit to me. We've got a whistle. We're going to say interference. Ah, okay, we're going to say further than five yards from the ball. Interference is the call. Yeah, Tars kind of getting away with one there. I um, thought it would. <laughs> yeah. It was a big hit, but I, I don't. Um, it was a big hit, but you're allowed to hit people yeah. big in this game. Yep. Yeah, I did. Tars getting away. With one there. But further than, uh, I guess, further than five yards from the ball, so we're going to call it interference. Tars, work it up. Top left. Take that shot. Save oh, May, just, Pennsylvania. It's just, it's just not the shot you want to see from the Tars with a fresh shot clock. Lefty from Logan Myers from about 14 yards out is just not the look we're looking for. Nope. It's not. And a successful clear there by the Bears. They'll take it right down the alley and then step it back out and slow things down. Tarts have had success. They've had success when they've possessed the ball, worked the ball around, playing wee ball, not me ball. Um, but they, for some reason, they just 
struggle sometimes to want to play that. As Lenore Ryan has done an excellent job, though, uh, forcing some errors. There's that inlet pass right on top of the yeah, crease. Right on the crease. I mean, the, the tar is just, just wide open. Yeah, every, the, the defense has just been yep. caught ball watching all day for the Tars. And it's it's a lot of the, the, the midfield level for the Tars, being down on those twos, being down at the hot slide, just not seeing the pass through yeah. and not covering their man time. It's one of those things, and, and you, you can see it on that pass right there. Everybody's literally watching the heads turn to follow the ball as it comes from top, uh, top left down to it's, a, uh, it's an early right face side. off there by Lenore Ryan, but not called. As they will control, and as Lenore Ryan will control, as some mic yeah um let's see here as Lenore well hey we got nothing as yeah. I'm getting nothing here As check, check, test, test. Vigo, you got us. Hmm. Roy, you, can you hear me? No, I can I hear nothing. Hear nope. Just all went out. Yep. Check, check, test, test. Wait, there we there go, we, and we're back. Sorry about that? those. Sorry about that, folks. Some technical gif difficulties there, as I think we are back uh, on the air, hopefully. As I uh, see the little green dials bobbing up and down, and that'll do it for the third quarter of action as the Bears are taking a five-goal lead and break before the fourth quarter. As, um, well, Roy... An uncharacteristic uh, second and third quarter there from the Tars leaves them in a five-hole deficit uh, here with 15 minutes remaining uh, in this NCAA quarterfinal. Yeah, the Tars have played very uncharacteristic uncharacter on offense and defense yeah. um, for them. Lots of ball watching, um, lots of kind of lazy play from the off defenders. We've also settled for really... Not great shots on the outside with plenty of time left on the shot clock. Um, and Lenore, credit to Lenore Ryan, they've done a, a great job defensively forcing the Tars to take those long shots on their fantastic goal, Pesa Benny. Um, and their offense has, has really finished. They, they kind of found they the high bounce shots yep. here. They've, they've figured it out in this really bouncy turf. And it's any goalie will tell you a high bouncer off a bouncy turf is almost impossible to save, especially when it's coming up off the turf faster than it when it hits it. Yeah, um, it, it is just such a tough shot. Those long bounce shots, they've really found success with it. They found that uh, little bit of seam. They found that seam just about everywhere Lenore Ryan has that they've needed to find a seam. They found that seam on, on uh, offense, just the ball movement and being able to get backside, being able to just find that that cutter just in the right spot at the right time. They've been able to find the shot placement. They've been able to find um, on their defensive efforts how to force the Tars into taking some, quite frankly, some poor shots uh, in this one. And uh, like I said, it's uncharacteristic uh, that we've seen the Tars. You know, this is this is one of those things where you say, you, you know, you got to play like you've been there before. Well, Nor Ryan has been here before. This is the first NCAA game for the Tars. And, Quite frankly, it, it looks right now like it's uh, a bit of a struggle for them uh, in this one. Uh, just really uncharacteristic of the season that they have had, of how they have played all year. Um, really struggling with a lot of things that they just haven't with. Yeah, and these, and these face-off battles are going to be absolutely crucial here in the fourth quarter for the Tars. I mean... Coming out from five, it's not impossible, but you need to win ground balls and you need to win face-offs, which the Tars haven't done since the first quarter. 
Yeah, Taurus really need to get going here, and they'll start things off by winning and the opening face-off, and then they'll throw it away. Wow. That's just the, the story of the Taurus day today. Yeah, it is. Yeah. You want a microcosm of this game. It's that play right there. And a successful clear there by the Bears. Well, they will work it down onto offensive end. It up. And if you are the Bears here, you're, you know, five goals you can make up really easy, really quick. Um, so the clock's not your best friend yet, but. They're getting pretty close it's, in that it, list. Yep, definitely getting there. They're, they're, they're top three or four right now. Another two minutes, they'll be that uh, you know second best friend. That's a nice check, but and just, just, just everybody's flat-footed. Yep, flat-footed, lazy defense there, going for the stick check on the backside. Again, not not your job as, as a short stick D mid there. Your job is kind of just ride them out, let the cause turnovers come from the poles. Yep. Hmm. That was just a tough one there. Yeah, you know, as that short stick defensive mini, your, your job is to slow them down. Play with your feet, play with your hips. You know, slow them down on their trip down to the crease. Uh, and, and, you know, that slide needs to come from a pole. Let the pole do that work. And, uh, well, the slide never came there. It was part of the problem. And what do we have here? Oh, reset oh. the shot clock here to, I think, 75 seconds yep. rather than 78. A little slow restart. Moving now. It's Hanson controls. So, Roy, in these situations, you start out great. Other team starts to come back, starts dominating this game. How do you emotionally, how do you... Um, you know, get that lacrosse IQ working. How do you get back in this game? How do you get your hearts back into this game right now? Yeah, I think it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a key goal or a key play from a key player. Nice save there by Pensa Benny. Or, to uh, kind of get the, the momentum back for the Tars here and just another ill-advised dodge there by Mikey Berkman. Kind of forcing it instead of moving the ball around with a re a brand new reset clock and we turn the ball over five seconds into it yeah and um playing without the stick there got to play with the cross didn't have it went in there for the kick but you got to be holding on to your stick there's Lenore Ryan controls steps it down into the box I think clock has, uh, I don't know if they're in shotgun, but they're, they're, they're definitely got a window seat in the car with them right now. They're not right in the middle seat in the back anymore. But no, yeah, they're, they're very happy just eating this entire shot clock up six goals. They're probably not going to really initiate until about 20 seconds left. So often, though, we see teams do that, and they take their foot off the gas, and they let another team back in that. And if you're Lenore Ryan... Do you just stick with what works and stick with what has been working uh, as they get a nice shot there from about 12 yards but misses the mark. We're under 20 on the shot clock now. And if you're the Tars, you can let them run down the clock. It's not the thing. They just can't come away with a goal and as no, they do right there. Yeah, and I mean, no, there's been no, absolutely no help None. from the Tars on defense. No one has been sliding all day there. I mean, you've got a defender wide open. Uh, all alone up at X, and we've got Tars, uh, number 18, Wexel Black, kind of face guard man up by the 22-yard line, providing no help and just an easy turn and score. Yeah. Got to come with the body right there. You got to play physical D. Um, can't slide with the you know with the stick check for in that situation. You got to put a shoulder in somebody's chest right there, and the Tars just haven't done that today. Ball on the deck. Ground ball battle is going to be won by the Bears. And this is turning all Lenore Ryan's way. 
they have shown up ready to play here um, today. I, I say they're, they're ready to play. It was all Tars in the first quarter of action. Tars absolutely, you know, were not dominating. It was 4-2, to two, though. Um, and, and just were in control of the game from the get-go uh, and looked fantastic. But something happened out there. And adjustments made by Lenore Ryan have given the Tars fits. And they have just not been able to recover uh, and have just really struggled to get back in this one, to get some fight out there. And again, another goal. No, they're going yeah. to yeah. wave it off. Yeah, we saw a couple of those at the Division One level called this week where the player after scoring came into the goal mouth, into the goalie space. Re that's a real emphasis for the refs here in the NCAA tournament. So we see that called there on the North Rhine. Hansen drives. Back uh, behind the back shot misses the mark, and we're going to say, what was that? That was a moving screen moving uh, pick. on the Tars there. Just Ooh. just can't quite seem to get anything going. You know, the, the, the goal mouth changes in everything that we have made in this sport. Like, we had it set. We had the crease. Not allowed to go in there. Then it's like you're allowed to go in there. Just can't go in direction and they said well you know what we'll just put another crease inside the crease that you're not you're really not allowed to go in that crease i think i've i think i've almost figured out the new goal mouth and everything of it i don't know we keep yeah. we keep changing it up uh, it's almost every year. like the uh, the non-stop changing uh face rules yes always changing yeah feel bad for the poor face-off guys yeah well you know you perfect something this is your move get a scholarship to go play in college for it uh, and then you show up and they say, oh, yeah, you can't do that anymore. Think of something different. Think of a different move. So, Nonetheless, always changing, always evolving. The game has gotten a lot better. The advent of the shot clock has made this game a, a, a much faster-paced game. It turned into a, a really slow-paced game there for about five or six years, um, which has always been the fastest game on two feet, as it's always been called, and uh, then slowed things down. Tarts dodged a bullet right not getting the slash call, but Lenore Ryan, that's uh, backside. Happy Mother's Day, everybody. On the backside shot. Nope. Catch Durian swings that over, far side. And up. White challenged up there at midfield, makes it across. 9.20 remaining. Those Tars are doubled up, 7 to 15 at the moment. And this game has really been all Lenore Ryan. Lenore Ryan out of Hickory, North Carolina. A little bit smaller than Rollins, actually. About 2,700 students total. So Tars work it around. Ball top center. Here's White looking to drive. Rolls back up high. Nice pass. Tars getting looking to get their hands free. Nice slide there from Lenore Ryan. White ball back. That's a great slide there. Yeah, and I think the Tars have really showed their age here. As a nice shot uh, there from Myers, but a nice save from Pennsylvania and a fresh 60 on the clock for the Tars. They'll work it back up. Myers looking to drive. Trying to roll off that screen. Here's White, and that's going to miss the mark. Out of bounds back behind. They'll back it up, though. Yeah, and the Tars have really kind of showed their, their age, and, and Lenore Ryan has, has shown theirs as a more experienced, kind of been there team yep. today. Uh, the Tars, 10 of their all conference, they have 10 all conference players on their all conference team, which is a Sunshine State Conference, which is nothing to slouch out. The two or third, second or third best yes, conference in the absolutely. country. Absolutely. Um, nine of the 10 are back again next year, just graduating one of those all-conference players. Now, the, the, the Tars do have some seniors um, in Eisenhower who's going to be very tough to replace, but this is a, a relatively heavy junior, yeah. sophomore, freshman team um, that haven't been in these types of situations before. Yeah, and, and that has showed as Tars again trying to make that move. That's a backside shot there, trying to come around the GLE, trying to find something that will work, and, uh, well, they have struggled to ball up at midfield there's a slash on yeah. the tars that's the right call there that is definitely the right call eisenhower caught that nine on the, uh, right on the back 
That's a, a little tangle up there. It's kind of a. That's one of those. It looks worse than it really is. You yeah. just get you just yeah. get kind of tangled up and Ooh, we and might get up. Do we have an injury here? I think he's all right. Yeah, I th he was I think just caught in his jersey. Yeah, his Tesla. stick was caught in his sleeve, kind of just stuck there. Yep. So if he had the ball with him still, it definitely would have been a flag, but just a loose ball hold and a flag for the slash there on Eisenhower, who kind of really came down on right number on nine, back. I believe. Yeah, yeah, um, right on uh, Colton Kraken's, Kraken's back. Little Ryan, um, you know, out of North Carolina, uh, mentioned a uh, great area at Hickory, North Carolina, about an hour northwest uh, of Charlotte. And... You mentioned they've been here before, and well, they 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 look like they have that experience. They they look like they have that experience. Something that the Tars have just struggled with today, and has been so characteristic of them and and the season that they have had. As so Lenore Ryan is man up, but will elect to take their time here. Work it over and back behind. So they play catch back behind. See everybody just spread out well wide here. The 2-2-2 two, two, two offense. Just wanting to play keep away for a while here before they get moving. As the Bears. Yep. Just, just right playing kinda, catch. Yeah, the writing on the wall kind of starting to come around here for for the Bears and the Tars. I mean, up seven with six and a half. Yeah, not even attempting a shot go, there yeah. in that man up opportunity. Uh, the clock is now their best friend. He's riding shotgun now. Um, Nothing you can really do for the Tars when you're man down like that, but now they can start putting the pressure on. Quite frankly, they need to. They need the ball back. Behind the back pass uh, is just going to find a whole bunch of nothing out of bounds. They'll just kill the clock. And there you have Lenore Ryan uh, just electing to run out the 80-second shot clock there as opposed to get, a, get their shot off. I think, they've, I think, I, I think the uh, clock is now the best man at their wedding at the moment, not even best friend anymore. <laughs> Not even attempting a shot. Tars, are they back? Yeah, they're back. They um, they have uh, they had Justin White yeah, back Justin on the far White's side. Just chilling over there. Yeah. I didn't see him. And you, what you worry about is you worry about the officials there not seeing him. Hopefully he said something to the official. Hey, I'm here. I'm on sides. I'm keeping us on sides. Yeah. To drive. A last ditch effort here. To save something in this game, Myers works it over across. White rips it, misses the mark. Out of bounds back behind. With 519 on the clock, Tars trail by seven. Look, you can get this done. You can get this done, but you got to go. You got to go quick. You got to get something working. Pass across. Tars work it up. Top right. Hanson, hands free. Shot taken. Save made there by Pence Benny. Yeah, Pesabeni's been fantastic today. Yeah, he has neighbors from New Jersey. They're playing a little catch, and uh, Pesabeni comes up big on the save. And you see Lenore Ryan again quickly getting into this 2-2-2 offense, just trying to play catch, and Tars are going to have to pressure out. And trying to get the ball back here. No real effort, no real attempt to um, get a shot off or create any offense here by Lenore Ryan as they just want to run this one down. As, uh, well, just a, a, an excellent job there by uh, head coach uh, Greg Paradine, uh, Ryan Crompton, Ed Cash, and uh, Eric Dickinson doing a great job of making adjustments in that first quarter uh, of action. After that, Quarter, Tars leading, getting out to a big lead. Four goal, well, not a big lead, but four goals quick, and took a four-two lead into that uh, break, and really came out. Lenore Ryan made a bunch of just little changes. Tars unable to uh, 
Um, so that one up as that shot clock runs out. Flair for the dramatic. Yeah, that one was up there. And it's Tars. Control now, three and a half minutes on the clock. What will they do here? Yeah, this is where this is where you you, you see the you want to see the pride of the, the Tars yeah, here. You do. Kind of, you, you, you want to see the players who, who as a coach aren't quitting, who are still playing a hundred percent like it matters as you see Grant Hansen with the dodge here. You you just want you want your players playing a hundred percent, even though they know they're kind of not going to be winning. Uh, as this a, game. Uh, yeah, a great shot there um, by Myers uh, finds the back of the net. So he's taking the, he's taken a few today. He has. He's taken uh, more than one, um, but that will find the back of the net. Dars to cut that lead. Spark, however, will be probably um, just a little bit too late on that. And it's back underway, and Tars win the face there. That will try and work it over and do. Eisenhower on the offensive end. Takes a step down. He'll stay out there with the pole. He's had a nice pick there for uh, Hans. Eisenhower makes a break at the cage there. <laughs> As uh, Hansen comes around, looking to roll underneath. Double, triple team is on. Lenore Ryan does not have any quit in on, on, on their defense right now. Still sliding quick. Uh, still sliding hard with the double and the triple team getting put on. As the ball will be worked back up to Myers. Freeman takes a shot, makes a save there as Pensabeni on the off stick hip shot. Ball worked over. And Lenore Ryan. And to their offensive end with 2.20 on the clock. And a um, six-goal lead. Can you continue to just run this one down? And um, oh, yeah, a trip, trip there. there. Yep. Yeah, it's going to be a flag. And I mean, great sportsmanship by the Lenore Ryan. Uh, yeah. Offensive or defensive inning. Not to take that not to take that shot there. Elected to kind of just hold the ball. Yep. That was a nice touch by Lenore Ryan. And then the Tars tripped him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Then the Tars go and just whack him right in the leg and yeah. trip him. Say, so you should have shot that. <laughs> but nonetheless, this just wasn't the Tars' day. Uh, it just wasn't. Um, you know, on a season that has been an absolutely storybook season for the Rollins College Tars, a season of so many firsts, uh, undefeated in the Sunshine State Conference regular season, going up against University of Tampa, the defending national champions. Oh, and 16 it's the Tampa coming into that game. They beat Tampa for the first time. That one in 16, got a few more to go um, against them. But nonetheless, you get that monkey off your back. You, you have this big thing going. Uh, you look really good. You drop one game on the road. You're playing in Utah. You lose to, Col um, you lose to Colorado Mesa, but that's it. Yep, and, and I mean, that loss came at a, at a neutral site game playing Colorado Mesa at Westminster, and, and really this is, is almost a neutral site game. I mean, we're, yeah. we are a good 15 minutes away from the, the, the Tars' home stadium, where they're at, the field they've been playing on all year, and um, it's kind of, kind of tough when, you're, when your field gets ripped up right at the, right at the beginning of, uh, of playoffs. But Yeah, it is unfortunate. It is. Um, but um, with that, uh, you know, it has been a, it has been a really a, a great season. You get that first win against Tampa. Um, you go undefeated. You win the regular season in the Sunshine State Conference. You go into the tournament. You win the tournament. Uh, you finish up uh, nine and zero in conference play. Um, your coach gets the Coach of the Year. Your goalie gets the Player of the Year uh, award. And you have this season that the Tars have just never had. The Tars have never, you know, gotten yeah. to that to that level of success before. As yep, the, they've made it clear all year the talent is there, the skill is there. They're still young, um, and the, pretty much every starter or player, except for a select few, will be back next year for the Tars. 
and they'll have that experience, right? They'll be in the conference championship game. They'll be playing with a target on their back all they will. year. Um, that's just something the Tars have, as a school for the men's lacrosse team, has really never, it's never happened for them. Yeah, first NCAA uh, tournament appearance as a nice save there by Pence and Benny as we tick under 10 seconds remaining. And Lenore Ryan is uh, going to go on and win the um, championship. As you see, a, uh, some fight there uh, from the Tars, uh, from Johnstone. Uh, but that will do it. Uh, from Harry Nelson Field here on the campus of Bishop Moore High School. The Lenore Ryan Bears win it a score of 14 to 8 over your Rollins College Tars. Tars have been eliminated uh, from the NCAA tournament. Lenore Ryan will go on to play the winner of UND and Wingate, which should be um, ending right about now. Yeah, uh, it, was, it was a close game last time I checked, but congratulations to the Bears. I mean, they played a great they game. They did. They made some amazing adjustment to that first quarter and limestone won that game 11 to 10 yeah sorry over uh over und wow but yeah the bears the bears put together an, an unbelievable show coming down here on the road been in florida for about a week and a half and and took care of tampa in a, in a great game and then uh, took care of an uh, an inexperienced tars here team here at home uh, all credit to them and and I wish them the best of luck for the rest of the season. Yeah, Lenore Ryan uh, really does a, a nice job making adjustments there uh, in the uh, in after that first quarter, finding those seams in the Tars' defense, uh, finding what will work, and just really giving them fits, frustrating the Tars at times. It was a clean game uh, for the most part. Very few penalties out there uh, throughout this one. Uh, but with that, uh, we'll run down some here for Lenore Ryan. Voss with two, Moffitt with two, uh, Eccleston with one, uh, Kanata with three, Reese with two, C with two, Huff with one, Hatcher with one for your Rollins College Tars. Uh, Hanson with two, Johnstone with one, Myers with two, uh, White with two, Buell with one as well. I we mentioned uh, Myers uh, earlier. Shooting the ball, 11 shots for him on the afternoon. Uh, 11 shots, 40 shots total uh, for the um, Tars for Kachadurian. Uh, seven saves on 14 goals allowed, 33%. Uh, and I think you're going to look at that and go, well, those numbers aren't that good. Um, look, that's not a great percentage. Shahe Kachadurian played great in goal. I, I thought I thought he played very good. Maybe it wasn't his best game, but certainly wasn't a bad game from him. Not, not at all. I mean, a lot of a lot of Lenora Ryan's goals, especially in the beginning of the game, first couple quarters, were all on the crease. I mean, he had he took so many crease shots um, from the uh, the Tars defense, kind of just having some lapses on the backside. Nothing you can really do yeah. about it. Yeah, I, when somebody's right on top of you, uh, right on top of the crease, you just can't do anything about that. Um, and that's where the shots were coming from. Pensabini, great uh, job for him in the cage for uh, Lenore Ryan, 65% on the afternoon, eight goals allowed and 15 saves for him. Well, Roy, just about does it. So, final thoughts as we end up closing out here the 2023 season uh, for the Tars. Yeah, the Tar. I mean, the Tars, as we said multiple times, have had a bunch of firsts this season. Great season. I can't wait to see what they put together for next year as most of the team um, is returning and, and most of the starters and most of those all-conference. Um, short on experience this year and, and next year, I hope uh, I hope that we're in the same position and with a little more experience and hopefully it goes the other way. Well, with that, uh, that will do it for the 2023 season as uh, the Tars have uh, the best season in their history. And a successful one at that, making their first appearance in the NCAA tournament, winning the Sunshine State Conference tournament, uh, and winning the regular season. Unfortunately, the most su successful season in school history ends today here on the campus of Bishop Moore High School. For Roy Hansen, my name's Clark Sprinkle. Thanks, everybody, for joining in uh, throughout the 2023 season here on the Sunshine State Conference Network. Until next year, bye-bye.